Hey guys, today is a super exciting day for me. We finally get to cover the cinder block wall behind me. Um, we're going to start over here from the shed and plant 16 creeping fig along 65 feet of the back of our property line. Our property line is 85 feet wide, but from the shed on we have uh, firewood and our tools and that's an area that is has a lot of stuff going on that I don't need to cover the cinder block with, but from where I put my um, bench, my planter's bench, all the way, my potting bench, I'm sorry, all the way to the end of the fence, that's where we're going to plant 16 of these plants. I'm going to plant them every four feet. And you know the saying, what is it, the first year they sleep, the second year they creep, and the third year they leap. Well, of course, I want them to leap this year. <laughs> but I know that's not going to happen. Um, I picked the creeping fig because I like the petite leaf. I'm going to tap into the line behind me. I'm not sure if you can see it in the camera angle. We'll run drip and they make different emitters, a uh, gallon per hour, um, half gallon, one gallon. I'm going to use two gallon an hour emitters. And when I plant each plant, I'm going to use some gypsum and some biotone. Um, over the summertime last year, actually it was the fall, I, we dug every hole for these plants, poured gypsum in it and poured water and kept pouring water with the hose just to help loosen up the soil, break, break down because it's so compacted, nothing's ever been planted here before. Little story behind the cinder block wall. There's a business behind us and for years it was a field, an empty field. And we are in the deepest southwest corner of the property. We became friends with, the, we introduced ourselves to the developer and asked when they were going to put the wall up. And we asked, hey, the day you actually put it up, because they'll do it in one day, we would like to take our wooden fence down. And he said, oh, sure, not a problem. And so early that morning, we were taking our fence down as they were building the cinder block wall. What We didn't want that gap that sometimes you have between the two fences because critters can kind of live in between there and leaves and stuff accumulates. So we were able to gain a foot and a half of extra property by taking our wooden fence down. And I think an average fence is about six feet high. And this one is seven and a half feet. So I like the fact that it's more secure and it's taller, but I definitely don't like the look of the cinder block. So this is gonna be an exciting day for me to get these all up. And even just from looking in from the house, it's just, it's gonna give it a better appearance, even though they're only, what, a foot and a half high right now. I'm gonna get started and when we're all done, we'll see how it looks. They're all planted, so let's run some drip now. Okay guys, this is an old sprinkler head that uh, has been capped off. It is a three quarter inch sprinkler line. I'm gonna remove the cap. Make sure I don't get any dirt in there. This is a T. And this is where I'm gonna attach my drip tube onto this end. So I'm gonna screw this onto the base my drip tube, which I have half inch drip tubing, this adapter can take half inch and 5 eighths inch. So I'm gonna screw the T on to the old sprinkler line. This is gonna be a super tight fit. So you're gonna wanna wiggle it on until you feel it. It's gonna go in about a half inch maybe almost a whole inch. And you'll feel it butt up against the end. And that way, once you feel it that happen, you'll know that it was a tight fit. Finish off tightening it up, and we'll run the rest of the drip. Okay, 
I run the drip behind every single plant. So what I'm gonna do is take this barb tool, poke it inside the drip line, it has a little hole, then I'm gonna stick a two gallon an hour emitter in, right where that hole is. I'm going to put it right behind the plant and then I'm going to stake it so it stays in place. I'm going to do that all the way down here and then of course that way. I know you see that the creeping fig is flopping over and that's because it had twisty ties that kept it together on the wood. We took those off. This will eventually attach to the cinder block. But what we're going to do is drill cement anchors <laughs> into the cinder block and run 16 gauge wire at three different levels. I haven't uh, calculated um, how many feet will do it apart. And what that will do is it'll help strengthen um, the plant so when it gets heavy, it won't flop over. I just wanted you guys to know, you don't have to do that. It will attach itself to the cinder block. And I don't know if you've seen, you've gone through drive throughs and you know, when they have the creeping fig against the cinder block as you're coming. And some of it, you'll tell the whole thing has fallen down. Anyway, that's why we're gonna run the 16 gauge wire across the wall. Before I put the last emitter on, I'm going to cap it off with the drip tube clamp. So I'd say about a one hand full is where you'll want to bend it over. I'm going to slide this part on first. Wiggle it down. Take your hand, one hand width, bend it over and then feed the other side back in. And that way that caps it off. Okay, I've got them all planted in, the creeping fig, and I ran the drip system. What I'm gonna do next is put in the concrete anchors. Um, I, forgive me, I haven't measured how uh, far apart we're gonna, uh, we're gonna install it, but I am gonna put three rows of uh, 16 gauge wire in. The concrete anchors that I bought came with a masonry drill bit. And what I did was I put some blue painters tape on the edge so I know how far to stop when, you know, when I when I drill into the uh, cinder block wall. And yes, I know it's electric. And I don't uh, so I had to run an extension cord out here, but someday I'll get a battery operated one. So I just wanted to let you know that the concrete anchors that I bought did come with a masonry drill bit. This is the wire that I'm gonna be using. It's like a baling wire or a fence wire. I'm gonna go about six inches in. I'm gonna loop it around here. Okay, let me, I'm gonna drop this down to the ground real quick. I'm gonna take about six inches. I'm gonna bring it really tight. And then I'm just gonna loop it around each other like this. That way it doesn't come off. Bring it around. You're going to want to loop it around the top of the anchor, not from below. So don't do it underneath. We're going to do it on top, okay? Bring it around and then you're good.
Okay guys, it's all done. Boy, what, that was a big project. It was bigger than I thought it was gonna be, but that's okay. This is something I wanted to do since the fall, but sometimes schedules don't always work out the way you want them to, and that's okay. At least I got them in before the heat started. I turned on the drip system to make sure all the emitters were working. Just in case I didn't tell you, I put uh, two gallon an hour emitters on each plant, and I planted 16 plants all together. I only did two levels of the uh, wire. I won't do the third one till the plant gets up much higher. I appreciate you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys are having a great weekend. Bye.